You know, when you've lost your discipline, you've lost your discipline, you've lost your discipline, but then you can regain it again. And we are grateful to God for that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Gross. <coughs> I think I'm healed, have not coughed all day. Whatever, look, I think I'm fine. So let's just move on. I was already fine some time ago, but now I'm also on antibiotics. So yeah. I'm healing. Mm. I think I'm gonna just enjoy my bare face for the next couple of perhaps days or maybe just today only. I don't know. Because I feel like my acne is clearing. Finally, guys. Uh yeah, and the hyperpigmentation is also fading quite quickly. So that treatment that I'm using appears to be working wondrously on my face look at that guys it's like a miracle happening in front of you like a little bit of a shock attack a shock surprise a shock attack and a shock surprise it's the silence detection young boy yes well yeah and we're celebrating my forehead as well so how's it in christ's name i hope you're good peachy stella and in a neat bunch it's yet another day the 19th and yes i'm wearing the same top as i was wearing yesterday because it's what we do yeah when life is hard oh uh, righto 19th of september guys you know what like ooh, i don't even know what to talk about like you know when you grab dust dirt and then you sprinkle it in the sky throwing it at people hoping that they're going to see it as confetti as opposed to dirt the fact that they end up dirty in the presence of your dust is going to evidence that no it's not confetti but dirt and that's just how I feel about about people who try to bring people into <sighs> yes that was a yawn people who try to bring people into their lives using witchcraft it's not confetti to celebrate presents it's dirt anyway look I'm just I'm exhausted I'm I'm actually sad there's there's a I'm always sad but sadder still am i today because i made a decision to watch a video yesterday that i shouldn't have watched i knew i shouldn't have watched it because i'm very sensitive but i watched it anyway i watched it anyway on youtube the idf uploaded uh the israeli defense forces their youtube channel they uploaded um some of the footage from uh, like you know the attack uh what what it is that hamas did live like footage that's moving not stills not photos of the massacre and they showed some of the stuff guys and i'm still so disturbed and i believe israel's doing this because they are aware anti-semitism across the world is a thing they're aware that there's going to be global sentiment change when they start to go in hard to eliminate hamas there's going to be pushback and so now they're doing like when when you have to do that like now they're doing everything in their power bending over backwards to show the world just what hamas did so the world can stay supporting them and my heart is broken i wish they hadn't uploaded that i don't know why how youtube allowed that video to be uploaded but then again youtube is american and currently america standing with israel so maybe YouTube allowed it, you know, because usually you don't find very very graphic stuff on YouTube. You cu you could find it on Twitter, but not YouTube. And by the time I watched that video, it was five hours since upload, and it was already sitting on like one million, one point one million views. I don't know why I watched. I shouldn't have watched. Like all the way to the end, I watched. Like as they were just mercilessly killing people. I've seen violence, guys, on TV you know i have seen violence in movies but there's something about the fact that it's a movie that makes it better because you know that it's not real the people are still alive but when a person just drops dead like on their face because they've been shot from the back and they died that suddenly and you know it's real it really happened it, it just loses yeah so i wish i hadn't watched it it's it's very it's been disturbing me and for for me it's like why does israel have to do that why do they have to say to the world before they even do the ground invasion in in gaza before they even go in to try and eliminate hamas weed them out like the rats that are roaming around in the pipes why do they have to first 
prove to the world shock the world enough for the world to say okay go in you need to eliminate this risk you need to eliminate this threat I mean initially they told us that Hamas beheaded babies they're not in the business of lying Islamic terrorism is what it is that historically has been one to proliferate propaganda that is untrue in order to make the world favor them because they've, they're violent and gratuitous so they have to pull these tricks Israel is not one to lie and just you know manufacture information misinformation that's the immaturity of Islamic Jihad that, that's what they do that's what they do so when the authorities in Israel released statements along the lines of the fact that babies have been beheaded women what, what is this children what is this babies have been burnt people have been massacred they there was no belief they, they've been burned in their cribs as they sleep alive and the world was like no this did not happen why would Israel lie like that they're not one to do that but you know when, when you want something to be true about someone I've come to learn even though you know their character just so you can be favored supported being wrong and just so you can make yourself feel better about hating someone that has not had it coming you will believe some of, like some of the most grandest of accusations coming their way just to proliferate your narrative because your case is not strong so Israel had to release the footage they, they first just said it on some Hamas did this they, they, they thoroughly killed babies in their cots they burned babies they mutilated bodies they tortured bodies they beheaded babies and the world was like oh please you're making it up something that Israel just it, it we, they just don't do that that's Islamic Jihad stunt work that's what they do because they gotta in order for anyone to support them at all because they're that violent they gotta create a, a very strong case for why people need to still stick with them but Israel didn't have to. Theirs is already done case. It's a, it's a done case, guys. It was an attack on them, a terror attack on them that was very clear. But because it's Israel, because it's Israel, they had to release very disturbing footage of burnt corpses of babies, of beheaded, decapitated babies. They had to release footage of burnt bodies. They had to show it actually happened because just merely and whatever videos were uploaded that were decent enough to be shared on news networks and YouTube that wasn't enough that wasn't enough so there were still riots across the world people still rose up woke up in the morning got out of their beds did a pro Hamas protest in the streets and knowing that eventually people are gonna turn their backs on them Israel then went in advance yet again and uploaded footage on YouTube that is so disturbing they didn't have to convince me they didn't have to tell me twice I already stood with them I believe but because I'm following this stuff and it's, it keeps on getting recommended to me and it was the official IDF YouTube channel I, I, play, I, I watched it I, I, I knew that I shouldn't have you know because the, 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 the warning was there it's graphic the warning was there and I, I still went in I didn't need to be convinced that Israel must eliminate Hamas from the face of the earth I I have I will never shift my you know I will never be shadowy concerning this matter it's always going to be cast in stone for me so frankly I didn't need that video and also frankly no one needed that video no one needed that video no one needed to get the proof of the beheaded babies no one needed to get proof of the charred babies nobody needed proof of the charred bodies and the, the, the massacring of people in their cars as they drove nobody needed to see that we ought have just believed it because that's not Israel it does not just manufacture misinformation it's not what they do it's not it's against their character <clears throat> but it's not against the character of Islam and indeed did they not go on right ahead and blame Israel for a bombing of a hospital when they are the ones that misfired and it landed in their own ecosystem and bombed the hospital and people still don't want to believe despite the proof oh that's another thing Israel had to go out of their way to basically study research probe that bombing at that hospital 
to prove that it was not from their own missiles that they fired. It didn't come from them. And even then it was it, it was a it wasn't a bomb but a a rocket. And the numbers were in, were inflated or d just manufactured by Hamas who were quick to blame Israel for that same rocket launch and because of Israeli intelligence praise God they were able to intercept a conversation between Islamic Jihad and members of Hamas saying whoops it landed in our backyard whoops it landed in our backyard yet despite that knowledge that understanding by the terrorists as they're busy shelling or trying to shell Israel they still went to the news media and said look they bombed a hospital and 500 civilians are dead when they're the ones that went into towns and just killed some people when I saw that footage guys I wish I hadn't watched it I've always been so sensitive that's the thing like I've, I know that about myself I, I, I never ever look whenever I drive past ambulances a car accident on the road I never look because I know I won't sleep I know it's gonna follow me for a week two weeks with me just thinking about the images of that I don't even like to see a, a, a dead body covered completely covered on the side of the road never mind one that you can see everything that happened to it I, I don't look I don't look I'm sensitive that's why I never did medicine even though I loved human anatomy and biology I could never go in that field because of my my thing you know I could yeah with blood my thing my arms never mind being squeamish it's not even so much about wanting to vomit I'm just sensitive the sight of death is it has been always very disturbing to me it never gets old it never gets old it never gets old so now I'm I'm crushed like the whole day I slept when I, as soon as I woke up thought about it the images just came to me one particular uh, picture really disturbed me because the guy was actively trying to run away from gunfire and then he just landed on his face on the pavement dead like just uh, dead just like that dropping like like free fall not the way that we fall when we're still sentient when you trip over a stone you you know your hands sort of kind of go in places so as to minimize the blow when you get to the ground that that's that, that that's the fall of a person that is alive and I saw a person falling after being shot that that was you know not even thinking about landing properly because they were already gone before they got to the ground and it just I can't like I'm so I don't even I'm sorry to describe even I shouldn't be doing that but it was just very graphic it was just how he fell on his face as he was running and how still he was when he got on the floor like no movement nothing I was just like whoa like yeah okay and then seeing the blood coming out and pooling around his head they managed to get to the head gone just like that that's a person that's that's the that's some of the footage that has been shared I don't even know if that st stuff is still on YouTube but I don't think they'll bring it down uh, if it was any other youtuber uploading that content they would bring it down but this is a political move and the US is allied with Israel so they're not gonna bring it down because YouTube is a is an American platform and they've allowed it for political reasons to help the case of Israel along in their fight so it's gonna stay and um but for me it's like if the world was not this rubbish that it is right now i would not have needed to see that just the reports on their own were enough we saw them breaking the fence going into um the israeli border we we saw them indiscriminately shooting at portable toilets so the fact that they were trying to kill just anybody even just in case somebody is inside a toilet using it just shoot them from there we ought therefore trust that these are people that were told just uh, mow to the ground indiscriminately do what you want with the situation so when then there is a report that there's been beheaded babies and burnt babies and child like uh, tw like one report apparently Oh, oh uh, what is this uh, of um one of the idf soldiers when they arrived in k the kibbutz there were 40 babies no not 40 babies sorry but eight eight babies curled up in a corner other adult with adults 
all of them burnt alive in that corner where they gathered them in their numbers and then just lit them on fire and among the crowd were eight babies and when these stories are told to the media they don't believe it some of them or they choose not to and it brings me to the thing that is also very pressing or troubling to my particular life right now i have been a particular kind of person pretty much from the time i was i've ever been a person even before getting saved in christ i've always been a particular kind of person i'm 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 disillusioned guys and right now i'm just asking god yeah i'm thinking rather to god yo like yeah you are forbearing you are long suffering because i personally cannot take human indiscretion and hypocrisy and what they can easily justify what they can easily justify I, I can't it's it's hard you know guys my whole life has been thrown away because enough people in their masses one unique resounding lie about me even though no historical propensity towards that behavior nothing that i had ever done up until the age of 29 and a half ought to have made people quickly reach that conclusion about me and yet just because of the sheer numbers that gathered in their lies my whole life got destroyed and i kept looking and listen well rather thinking to the lord <clears throat> in in despair thinking god what's happening to israel happened to me i was massacred by terrorists overnight and lost everything and the past decade almost i've been trying to get back what i lost i've been fighting for my life i have basically I, this is a reaction ministry this life that i live is a response guys it is it, it is not the initial offense this is defensive my my deeds my whole ministry is defensive it's not offensive because i was attacked while i lay in my bed at night just like the people in the kibbutz and my reaction was therefore defensive and the way that i am going about this like the things i am doing the things i'm saying i would not have had to do them i would not have had to bring out the dirty laundry of all the people whose dirty laundry i'm bringing forward i would not have had to dig up all the stories of my life from since i was a child to explain the abomination using my superior intelligence to convince people who otherwise if the same testimony was being given by a lay jane who does not know how to put her words together would have just been written off i had to create a very compelling argument that would be believable by even the most doubtful of souls even the most skeptical and cynical of people i have had to use the, the superior that i've been given as a human being in terms of giftedness to massacre a people who were already very weak in comparison to me they were already minuscule microscopic infinitesimal barely recognizable in comparison to me it would have been the act or the work of a bully if i had offended them apart from in and of myself being attacked first because frankly i had grander arsenal i had more weapons at my disposal i was frankly way more gifted way more talented way better spoken way more able to piece together an argument way more informed way more given than all of them and i brought all that to the party but in order that my offensive now that i am forced in it against them might not be gauged as a woman that is just spreading everybody's dirty laundry in the neighborhood not caring about people's secrets and protecting their reputations in order that i might not look like that i have had to pro provide so much freaking data i have had to provide so much evidence to prove that what i'm doing is absolutely necessary because if i don't do it just like in israel there is no guarantee that that would never happen again that that would never slap their backyard again that they would not one day wake up with one thousand three four hundred more of their civilians dead that this won't happen again they have to eliminate hamas from the face of the earth and unfortunately there will be casualties in this particular war collateral damage do you understand and in order for israel to justify doing this they in order to help them 
to help the world not turn their back on them period when they finally use their obviously grander arsenal against hamas they've got to now basically show very disturbing footage just to prove to the world that this did, did, did happen and our response is therefore warranted our reaction is therefore 100 percent warranted israel would not have just gone into gaza occupied it and ransacked the ecosystem just because they are scared hamas might just one day rise up and do a strange thing no they were afflicted while they were just sitting waiting not even so much they weren't even waiting for this they were merely existing and then this assault on them afflicted them and yet they're having to still do what they're doing to proliferate propaganda so as to cause minimum negative response by the global population that has historically not cared about the fact that hello the original terrorists the original afflictors the original offenders were hamas and if you don't take them out of the picture altogether there's no guaranteeing that next year this time or maybe the next they, they might just wait five years they're gonna do this again and this time they're gonna plan so well that it's gonna be five thousand people never mind one thousand four hundred ten thousand maybe like just lay flat the entire um what is this jerusalem no, not they would never bomb jerusalem because they want it for themselves but tel aviv all of it just bomb it they, they could have done that next time it might just be that like as humanity the bible let's let, let me rather say the bible this the, the bible is a is a book that has all different kinds of genres in it it's got horror it's got what looks like science fiction metaphysical activity it's got comedy it's got romance it's got violence people go to war because the lord has come on the earth not to bring peace but a sword so the lord knows that people will have to fight therefore fighting in the sight of the lord in and of itself is not the problem the issue is your cause the issue is your reason and the issue is your um motivation if you have been motivated to fight because you are defending your people and if your people are innocent then indeed regard yourself as one that has been charged by god to take up your armor and make war so fighting according to the scriptures is entirely necessary because we live in a world of division where people don't always understand what is the perfect and right thing to do and in fighting for their wrong cause will try and kill other people so those that are standing for what is right must therefore defend that turf so the kinds of massacres that we saw, that we see in the world today, we've seen them in the Bible. But the difference is always the cause. The difference is always the reason. There is always a difference between the afflictor or the wrong side. There's a difference between a terrorist and a militant, a, mil a, a warrior. There is a difference between a soldier and a criminal. There is a massive difference. And the Lord has inspired the earth to make out of themselves soldiers against those who have made out of themselves against the earth criminals and hamas are terrorists they are criminals and israel has raised up an army of soldiers to war with them but the world will stand with criminals so much so that in advance before they even do the ground invasion the ground invasion of which is taking forever to start because they're trying to be politically correct the way that they've always just been so humane as a force an army they are going in advance to explain themselves as to why what's about to happen had to happen israel is aware of the the the, the thing that it has basically the the the, uh, the war cry the pep talk whatever you want to call it that has been spoken to their soldiers the climate the heart of the soldiers on the ground is of a particular stature right now they know what they need to do and there is a resolve However, there is also an, a, 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 just an unspoken understanding. Maybe spoken, because some people have already speculated unto this regard. That the resolve that the soldiers have, they need to calm down with it. They're going to get to a point where they have to calm down. They know what they need to do. They know that there will be casualties in the IDF because of a ground um, offensive. They, they, inevitably, some of them will die. They know they have to go in hard. They know this might even take a long time, this war. And they know that the world is going to change its mind somewhere along the way. So now they're preparing all of us for this thing that is coming. They, they keep on explaining, look, 
I'm about to go in and do some pretty heavy damage inside Gaza. But this is why. This is why, guys. This is why. They are showing us images, footage that is so disturbing that some of us are like, but I didn't need to see that. It's unfortunate curiosity killed a cat because now I'm like a dead cat. I was curious and I clicked on a video that was very, very disturbing. I ought not have even had that video to look at. It was uploaded just yesterday. Just yesterday. All these days after the initial attack, they hadn't gone what you would imagine to, 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 to think would be that low yet to a point of uh, publishing such hard knock footage online on YouTube, which tends to be a lot more, you know, iffy about what you can put up there than Twitter, than Twitter. Yeah. They had to do that because even though they have not yet done the grand, grand offensive, they know what they're going to do and they know what the world is going to say. Oh, why do they have to explain themselves? Why do they have to keep warning the world? That was my heart cry. That's what I was lamenting about to Jesus. I just, I was so disillusioned last night as I lay trying to fall asleep with those images just flashing in my mind that I was like, God, but you know how the world is. Look at, look at my life today. All these years down the line, ever since the first infraction against my life, ever since the terrorist attack on me. Look at the way that I'm living. And the reason why I'm still living like this is because people, after I was obviously massacred, having done nothing wrong, preferred to rescue what they imagined were the majority of people that stood to fall apart because of my case. Because according to them, I was just one person. I already mentioned in the previous segment of this video, without being poked and prodded away at, I have always just been an adversary you don't want. You, you, yeah. Because of the suite of giftedness that I have got, I am not easily entered into arguments with. I am better as a friend than an enemy. And it's been like that all my life. And despite that being a thing, People picked a war with me in, in bully mode, albeit being minuscule, like little figurines in their numbers. And they did an offensive that was so afflicting that now I am literally still recovering a good almost a decade later. It's been nine years. However, they did this with the knowledge of the potential for their destruction. Should I get justice as indeed justice is truly justice? They knew there isn't a single person that was not aware of what would happen to them if I got justice. In the run up to afflicting me, the information was at their disposal, just like with Hamas. They were gonna go and terrorize Israel. Okay? Knowing that as the small little terror group that ain't got jack on Israel, that they stood to be blown up to smithereens. Smithereens. So what gave Hamas that bravado to do that in Israel? Likely Iran. Likely Hezbollah. Likely or basically just Iran, the head of the snake. They could not have just done this without planning through Iran. They had to have known of a big brother, a big daddy or whatever you want to call it. Some force that had the ability to make war with Israel in a way that would uh, almost be, you know, cause a neck on neck battle. As opposed to, uh, you know, uh, one where we're literally dealing with 10 Goliaths over one David. I mean, Hamas very likely was a, a decoy. Like, the Bible says that just like a person poking and prodding away at their nose, and so therefore causing a nosebleed, so too is a, a person that stirs up contention. A person that just starts a fight. They like an individual that just messes with their nose until it bleeds. And I believe that Iran very likely wanted a nosebleed. They wanted an excuse to once and for all begin a war against Israel and knowing that Israel will not just stand back and do nothing they then got little minions rodents rodents do you understand ants insects cockroaches they got cockroaches to invade 
so that they could finally bring snakes into Israel because they knew that Israel would not just deal with an in would not just take an infestation of cockroaches in their st stride and given that they're as big as they are they will just bring a fumigator however however with that fumigator going into the building they then would be justified to defend the cockroaches that are in a building that was sent by the snakes so I feel as if though Iran wanted to start a war with Israel, knowing that it might be long drawn, knowing that it might take a very, you know, tumultuous global situation just to finally deal with Israel. Because the, the thing that Hamas did was unwise. It's all I could think about. It, it was unwise. They are so small. And indeed, Israel is at the border of Gaza trying to do a ground invasion, a, a ground incursion and... Iran is saying, if you go in, we're going to convert you. We're going to basically cause an earthquake. Uh, just a threat that we're going to send so many bombs that your land will shake. So you, you poke and prod away at a nose. It bleeds. And when then the face that is bleeding wants to put a tissue to wipe the blood, you're going to like let that blood drip. Let that blood drip down your face and you look stupid. Otherwise, I'm going to come in. If you insist on removing that blood and blow up the whole head, never mind causing a nosebleed. I feel as if though they wanted an excuse to fight Israel, but that's the thing about Israel. They would not just out of their way. They're not a Putin that just wakes up one day and makes a decision to invade a sovereign country. That's not what Israel does. They knew that Israel was not about to go and do something to poke and prod away sufficiently uh, uh, justifiably enough to Iran or even Gaza or anywhere, any of their surrounding nations to cause them to justifiably start just shelling and shelling and shelling, bombing, laying them waste and taking Jerusalem, all of it. So they sent cockroaches because they knew that they wanted to bring pythons. That, that's what I think happened over here. And a similar thing happened with me years ago. Yes, I'm minuscule, just one person. Nothing of me matters, apparently. But according to heaven above, not even a single hair in my head will perish. So I guess we get to find typologies to our own lives and what's going on with Israel. Because they're the apple of God's eye, as are we as Christians. And the way that people just attack us gratuitously is in order that wars might be spurned up from the ground in our lands that would justify their retaliation against us when we were in defense of ourselves. That's why we even went to war in the first place. Israel said that this war, they, that, that, that Hamas started it, but they will finish it. And Iran is th seriously thoroughly thinking, not on my watch. I don't think it was wise even on the part of Iran because nobody is ready, not ready enough. Syria, not Syria, Lebanon is not in any economic position. It's stability's political, socioeconomic position to fight this war. Indeed, Israel has told them that if you shell and bomb us and keep on acting a fool where we're concerned, you are going to be reverted into a desert wasteland and we are going to decimate Damascus. And indeed, it's been predicted in the scriptures that Damascus is going to end up a ruinous heap. So while we understand that the scriptures are being fulfilled, my qualm and my biggest issue that I'm taking to God right now is, Lord, but you know how these people are. You know how they are. They know what they're fighting with. They're not dumb. They're smart. If anything, they're very intelligent. So when they come against Israel, they knew that Israel would react in this way. <coughs> My question is, will you be so patronized by these plotters and schemers? Will you be so patronized because I see this for what it is because it happened to me. What is happening to Israel, I see it for what it is. Initially, when I lost my job, it was laughable that I was even suspended. It was laughable that after suspension, five months progressed and then I was fired. It was laughable because I had so many weapons at my disposal. But here I am 10 years later, almost a decade, having been wiped off the face of the earth altogether. So what would the equivalent or tantamount of a Hamas terrorist have been leaning on to pull the rug under my feet in the first place? The fact that a bigger organization would be so corrupt, do you understand? That it would stand with an obviously wrong person and then threaten my future, my whole future, if I dared say, all I gotta do is defend myself. I never would have gone to war with you. But right now that you, now that you have thrown a missile in my backyard, I gotta react. Otherwise, I'm gonna look stupid. I can't just take this lying down. However, the powers 
that were behind the minion, the cockroach that hurt me, was so mighty that I've been literally eating dust now for a decade. A decade. And that's my pain and that's my sorrow. Why do I have to bring out so much dirty laundry when it is clear I'm innocent? Why do I have to create such a strong case when my case is over? My case was solid nine years ago. Nine years ago. And my war, therefore, a, a, a one, a done deal. It was a, a one nine years ago. But here it is in 2023 that I'm still unemployed. I am impoverished. I am being treated like a child. And I have, it appears, no future. I am sitting on a multi-million rand lawsuit against MTN and many other organizations that, uh, 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 I feel like maybe, let me, let me, I don't like telling my story, but I guess I will to a certain extent. I, I don't have a choice, do I? So you can understand what I'm talking about. Oh, guys, guys, I'm just, um, God have mercy. Help me. Help me. Um, what is this? Help me to relay this, this story. Cause it just, like, I am concerned that we are still going to be in a long haul and there are going to be surprises that are going to come to us that we never expected. There is so much confidence at present in the body of Christ and in Israel that this is a done deal. They're going to win it. They just need to, however, go in do what they need to do but based on what i experienced if this is going to go the exact same route there will be a shock in the body of the planet as to how this eventually works out the the, the guaranteed victory that we are currently standing on the prospect of might shock the living daylights out of us out of us as to how long it'll take to get there i mean it is guaranteed that's a fact because the scriptures say so but how long we're going to take to get there is going I believe it's likely to shock us. I'm exhausted. I took a prayer up to heaven because I was tired. I'm like, God, I'm exhausted. And when I look at this, all I see is my case. All I see is my case. A person with a strong case. The evidence is in favor of them, damning of the enemy. And yet there will be so much opposition that is foolish, lacking wisdom, gratuitous, and yet strangely supported that Israel is going to struggle to get its final result in this war because of global betrayal global betrayal that i can just see it the first speculation in this regard i made it about two days ago and i was saying that there is no way that the us of a can persecute me like this with all of their shadow banning and afflicting of me targeting me just because i'm a christian and stand by the side of israel because if you're chosen by god you will always have opposition and as lukewarm as america is it, it will inevitably manifest demons against israel and so switch up on it that was the first such half of a speculation unto that end and as i am observing what the idf is having to do just to let people know to convince them as to why it is important that they should even do this ground invasion is for me unnecessary it's a done deal if at all the world was fair and not corrupt and those looking at the situation of right mind there wouldn't even be a disciplinary hearing there wouldn't even be a meeting we wouldn't even need to call garabo in because this chick is obviously wrong now I'm mixing stories i bet you can tell israel ought to have been able to do a ground invasion on the very day that it said it's gonna do it instead it's been delaying and i believe one of the biggest reasons why there is a delay is yes compassion for those that need to move to is it the north of of gaza while they are making negotiations with egypt to open that border or whatever that humanitarian corridor whatever that's part of the reason but another part of it is because they have to tread lie to why why if this was fair let me just go into my story and I, I hope to cramp it as much as i possibly can so you can understand why i'm finding myself now 10 years unemployed and going nowhere my whole career was destroyed by the organization i worked for they rendered me worthless useless almost blacklisted do you understand such that everywhere I have gone for a job interview, I would get far enough and be almost guaranteed to get the job. And then all of a sudden, I never mind would not get called to successfully come and work now, but I would be ignored. As in my calls wouldn't even get taken. As in I wouldn't even have anybody calling me letting me know, I'm sorry Garoba, you didn't get it, somebody else did. Like as in being iced out by recruitment agents 
and I'm wondering, this is rude. I've never experienced anything like this before. I've always been able to call a recruitment agency up and be like, so how did it go? Did they want to see me? Uh, what was wrong? If at all not, blah, blah. This time around, I, like literally I would get told, no, please call back after two hours. She'll be in in two hours. No, she'll be in in three hours. And I would not get a call back. I would send emails and they would not get responded to. Same person that I was emailing, oh, to and fro, to and fro in the initial discussions. They just, were, they ghosted me. I have been dealt a bad blow by recruitment agents who ended up ghosting me. Ghosting. And I couldn't understand what was going on. So whatever was done to me, I don't really know how deep the rabbit hole goes. But I was sabotaged by some pretty prolific people in South Africa to make sure that I can never get a job, ever again that's what happened to me because my case touched the very chief executive officer of mtn and i was innocent obviously in a way that was so violently ignored that everybody was culpable and i threatened to sue and the case yaga that hey guys let me wait again i'm jumping around all over the show let me let me just like i don't want to tell my story it's so long I've, I've told it before a million times but anyway let me let me retell oh god like i don't have time for this like i'm gonna try and squeeze squeeze it in half an hour proper i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lay i don't want to labor i don't like to recall these details i really don't I really don't <sighs> okay so I was a project manager for MTN during a time when the company was restructuring quite a lot the organization itself was no longer the beast it used to be there was a time when people were just getting its product no matter what because people had need for telecommunications services and it grew itself it, it grew itself just from sheer demand but then after perhaps like just over a decade of the of the organization or maybe two decades of the organization doing so well without even trying right without even trying market the market started to get saturated by all different kinds of other entrants into the market that were smaller even bigger uh, telecom went mobile i could go on and celsi grew bigger than what everybody expected it to become when it was first starting out when i was in high school it was not expected to be the beast the beast sorry that it eventually became in south africa and so it it, it did it caught up and was now a, a viable competitor Vodacom was the big thing that it was. However, MTN was a number one in, in, in prepaid. And even that was getting taken over. So now innovation mattered. Now what it is that the company uh, strategized actually mattered because people were not just picking up their product off their shelves and running with it no matter what. Now they actually had to be good at what they did. So the company was not doing badly. It was not failing. It wasn't losing money. It was still making money, but not nearly as much as it used to make in the past. We were not getting super profits like what we used to get in the past, but we were still getting profits. Enough for staff to justifiably keep getting bonuses every year. But the decline was a cause for concern. The decline was a cause for concern that any leadership in an organization ought to focus on, right? to a point of recognizing that it might be the beginning of the decline now and we might still be making some pretty good profits but they're not the super thing that they used to be one day however we're going to be skating on thin ice one day however we're going to need to take some drastic measures just to rescue ourselves as an organization so since we have uh, foreseen in advance that it could get really bad right now we have to start pulling our socks up i'm sharing as much information right now as is feasible or acceptable to share by a company publicly so that i'm not exposing company secrets or whatever because i gotta keep myself not that i'm like i've just so given up on this case that i don't think i'm gonna sue anymore my heart is broken i'm devastated i'm going through a lot and i've, I've aged a whole decade and i don't have time so 
like whatever right however there is still that small little possibility that i could still raise this beast from the ground and get what i want and so therefore i'm very careful with how i talk about mtn because they might just come and use that information against me saying that you shared company secrets and so therefore break your end broke your nde blah blah so i'm sharing only that which is information that was already available to the public uh, meaning that i'm still within a safe zone okay let, let's just keep that at the top of your mind so this organization was starting to fall apart therefore they uh of course strategized as an organization to avoid or eradicate further declines unfortunately however because mtn was a corrupt organization yet again public knowledge stuff was flying in the media about all manner and kinds of arrested executives and parts of the operating companies of mtn across africa there was a lot of there were a lot of scandals in the media a lot of interviews on said radio 702 of mtn executives there was um shiga shiga in the business people were doing some pretty clandestine stuff corrupt that's the unfortunate thing about an organization that is burgeoning booming growing right and you have got like some shoddy people that have been put in leadership positions they're going to try and push their own thing they're going to try and launder money they're going to try and squeeze this and that and whatnot uh like not do things the way that they ought to do in order to promote one another and because um mtn was a young company relatively young however it grew violently and quickly and spread across africa in just two decades yeah because of that do you understand uh the people that were um, the heads of it those that had been catapulted up the corporate ladder really quickly were lay janes and lay joes believe it or not one of the guys by the time that i if anything the the, the, the human resources executive that was responsible for my uh, that was basically heading the hr department that was messing with my particular future this is his story how he got into mtn apparently allegedly he was they, they like there was such a a, a, a huge demand for the product that MTN was selling at the very beginning its infancy they could not just go through recruitment agencies to get stuff at MTN because that would take time red tape and so they literally drove drove a downtown Joburg and they just kept on like they literally just grabbed people from the queues taxis who are going to work or who are going to school whatever and they were like are you interested in a job at MTN and if this guy was like yes they like come in for an interview on tuesday come in on for an interview on wednesday come in for an interview that literally they sent out employees uh, i believe in hr to go and scout people in the street because they couldn't wait for recruitment agencies to do what recruitment agencies do there was that much of a recruitment drive and apparently that's how the, the guy who would ultimately become the human resources executive got hired at mtn he was collected at a taxi rank went for the interview successfully interviewed and then mtn would run would basically take him to school mtn did everything for him trained him raised him up and stuff until he eventually became the big thing that he became so you would find people that were very young at mtn very very young in very senior positions because they were there from the start with the company they were given positions of authority very quickly and it became like one big fa happy family so everybody was happy that's how it grew it was one big chunky family by the time i got there it had already been quite established but it was still growing quite fast but there were apparently some pretty happy days back in the day like call center agents getting the kinds of bonuses that in other companies proper like in uh, what is this like a middle management upper middle management person would get that kind of bonus but they were getting them in the call center it was it was that good like i i know of a guy who said that they got a whole like home loan paid half like as in paying for ha half of a bond all of it because of a bonus that they got that was what was apparently mtn in the very beginning days okay again public knowledge not sharing anything uh, secret about the company very well so i was working for that kind of an organization when you are growing that fast and your the demand for your product is that hard knock sometimes you will not have time to train up staff you will not have time to do processes properly you will not have time to um uh, basically raise up a, a company the way that is you know in the, on the street and narrow and people's skills will also be lackluster in comparison to people in similar positions in other organizations 
so their business analysts were not that experienced their be their, their project managers were not that experienced their uh it well no the it professionals had to be experienced they had to be trained well because they had to be good at what they did because that was the the the, the um, what is this the, com the the key competency of the organization but uh everybody else was just winging it thank you very much that's the word that i'm looking for everybody else was just winging it in that environment so because everybody else was just winging it innovation um and pioneering strategy in terms of basically taking the company in in a very um futuristic way where you're you're forecasting for like 50 years for like 40 years from now 30 years from now it was lacking it was lacking people were being they were studying while working there and growing with the company so the experience of a person that what like um <laughs> how can i like the experience of a person that has grown organizations uh, that has seen processes that have that has put together processes to run a company and also strategizing to make it a cut above uh, creating a competitive advantage essentially for the organization they they were they were kind of new fluffy and not only fluffy but not experienced enough they had not seen enough they had not seen enough flames because everything they were doing was just working the the, the product was selling itself they did not need much marketing they did not need much strategy because they their product was in such high demand cell phone uptake uh, telecommunications uptake the ict space was burgeoning at the time it was the season of the dot-com boom it was that time so literally this was a, an industry that was just selling itself and with with uh, uh, what is this um vodacom had market uh share it had market leadership dominance in uh what do you call this postpaid contracts okay while mtn was quite the it was a beast with prepaid because it was the first on the market to offer people prepaid yeah like they were the first to offer prepaid uh like as in buy da data and then be on the phone uh and vodacom had had become number one in the country for offering cell phone contracts right uh, but then there was a market of course for people who did not want to have to be on contract they just want airtime they just want a sim card that if it runs out of airtime it runs out of airtime i don't get billed at the end of the month i don't have to do whatever yeah that was it's um a competitive advantage so it was able to grow alongside vodacom very well because vodacom was postpaid mostly and uh, mtn was prepaid but then mtn developed a postpaid section indeed just as vodacom also developed a prepaid section and so they were competing in this regard but vodacom mtn maintained a market dominance in prepaid while vodacom in postpaid right and then cell came on board and was also doing both things then there was of course less market for mtn and less market for vodacom etc the more entrance into the market i guess the stiffer the competition of course but they were still all burgeoning like violently because the demand in the country demand in the world at large was that spectacular plus mtn was wise in its um african strategy in that it rolled out uh its offering its service offering to africa the rest of africa and so there are a lot of african countries still to this day that use nothing but mtn that that's what was happening at that time so the company was not only it, it was number two in south africa but in many african nations it was number one and the only telco provider in that ecosystem that's how it became a beast again i'm sharing public knowledge